the title is an HP 30B repurposing project from Walter Bonin and Paul Dale, but really it is it is a call for people in this room who feel that this project is worthwhile to and and have some time in their hands to possibly get up get in touch with these guys and try to help them out if you possibly can. Uh, they may have gone as far as they can go with this, but in any case. Um, when the 20B came out and, and, and it had been made specifically for the, uh, with the capability of reflashing the ROM with whatever you wanted, and HP made a, a, a wealth of information available so that people knew what they needed to do to get the job done. Uh, Walter Bonin, who I mentioned earlier today, who was always uh, um, imagining new things and, and better things and seeing the lack of a high-end scientific uh, of recent years, uh, made an attempt to uh, design a repurposing project for the 30B. And he in, uh, he's in Germany and Paul Dale is in Australia. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about it. When I heard earlier, I guess last week it was, that, that Gene Wright had successfully gotten a lot of info out of Monty Dalrymple and is going to discuss his new project. And I had heard about this one uh, through the HP Museum Forum of the past <coughs> month. I thought, well, Heck, I ought to contact these guys up and find out what they're doing so I could provide information about that as well because pretty much our primary <coughs> job here is to kind of get the community informed and, and exchange information and maybe get people to help out, help each other out. So uh, Walter has this product. Uh, he's uh, nicknamed it the HP34S um, in, in honor of the... Uh, 34C, it's distant ancestor. Um, there is a, an 18-page excerpt of his detailed manual in your proceedings, so you can read that at your leisure. Um, I've also got the 50-page full version of the manual, electronic version. It's already on Richard's machine, and if people want to get a copy of it, we can make that available. In any case, um, this machine uh, has got a switchable four or eight level stack to handle up to four, <coughs> four complex numbers. Um, it encompasses the 42S and 16C function sets, uh, with the exception of matrix math, because I couldn't shoehorn it in. Uh, complex arithmetic, with, including a complex last X with two registers. Uh, solve and integrate functions, fraction functions from the 32S2, statistics from the 21S, uh, many physical constants, uh, lots of conversions, more than 100 data registers, 476 program steps, and you know it goes on and on. 100 user flags, um, global and local labels, global labels up to three characters in length, and 31 byte oh. register. Um, this is from the intro to the manual. You'll see it in your package. Um, based on the renowned 42S RPN Scientific, the most powerful RPN calculator built so far. The set is extended and completely includes functionality of the 16C, fraction mode of the 32S2, <coughs> statistical distributions as featured in the 21S, and more functions for math, statistics, physics, engineering, programming, etc. Such as, and you see the list there, um, uh, extended date and time calculations, uh, financial operations, 50 fundamental physical constants, 50 conversions, and, and many uh, non-alpha uh, uh, characters. Uh, the memory layout is as follows. You've got an alpha register, your display obviously, and you've got a four or an eight level stack, X through Z, I'm sorry, X through T, or X, Y, Z, T, A, B, C, and D is the way they're naming them. Last, uh, the uh, last X is uh, registers L and I, if you've got a complex last X, you've got a real part and imaginary part. Um, statistical registers are stored in registers 87 through 99. Um, the, the stack has its own numbering. It goes all the way up to 111. Um, there are 99 user flags and three flags to indicate overflow carry and what they call danger. Um, and 476 program steps. Yes, it indicates uh, flag D is set if uh, the result is a not a number or, in, or infinite and, and that sort of thing. Um, and uh, some examples on the RPN stack, you got a four level or an eight level. 
Um, and it goes through the stuff that that we're pretty much familiar with, and you'll see it in your you'll see it in your handout. Um, last X returns um, a last X complex to registers X and Y. You can also do math with complex to numerical registers, and it will store the real and imaginary parts in two consecutive numerical data registers, uh, where you specify the lower number, and you get it goes to the lower and the upper automatically. Um, here's some uh, ideas of, of addressing and comparing real numbers. There's a lot of um, uh, inequality tests, you, w examples such as is x less than or equal to zero, is x greater than or equal to y, is x not not equal to the value in register 23. Um, they use the right arrow to indicate indirect addressing. Um, so you can say something like uh, store to the register whose number is stored in register 45. Uh, view the register whose number is stored in the L register. Um, and you know something like a scientific notation with a number of digits stored in, in uh, register Z. Um, uh, more more stuff. Um, it's got a solver, and you've, if you've got a function called f1 mu, you can say as solve f1 mu, and it'll it'll solve it. Um, you can. This is an example integrating the function whose label is stored in stack level t. Uh, execute the routine whose label is stored in register 44. You've got you know traditional numerical la uh, label zero to 99. Um, Alpha, lab alpha labels global, which are up to three characters, for example. Uh, he describes the display, which is the 30B display. Um, there, and and you, you can go through this, you know, when if you're interested, it, it talks about what the various enunciators represent and how numbers are shown. And I should mention for the base arithmetic, um, you're not restricted to bases 2, 8, 10, and 16. It will operate in any integer base between 2 and 16. So you could say base 13 and it'll work. Um, there is also a mode, a mode register that you can store and recall. And he's got a description here of what all the modes are, display format, number of places, angular mode, um, date format, a curve fit model, Time display, integer sign mode, like the 16, ones, twos complement, unsigned, uh, at, or the stack depth of four or eight levels. He's got a version function to tell you what version of the of the firmware is stored in there. Um, more display things. That, since there's so many flags, they've come up with sort of a unique way of displaying at a glance the contents of as many as 30 user flags at a time with a display like this, it divides, it, it actually goes from left to right, from the, and there's three rows of information there. The top row, uh, and it's divided in half with these vertical bars. The top row is flag 0 to 5, then 6 to 10, 11 to 15, 16, 20. So this is flags 2, 3, I'm sorry, 3, 4, yeah, uh, hang on, yeah, 3, 4, Six, eight, etc., and you know, and you can use the arrow keys to go from showing the zero to twenty-nine flags to ten to thirty-nine, etc., all the way through the user flag list. Um, program mode displays look like this. The step number is down here. The number of available steps is shown in where the exponent normally is, and the program step itself is in the alpha portion of the display. Um, uh, more of the stuff. Depending upon what base you select, there it will tell you a B for binary, O for octal, D for decimal, H for hexadecimal, and then it will use a little numeric to designate the other bases in between if you so select them. This is an example here showing you an unsigned hexadecimal mode, 64-bit word size, there's your value, and, and the carry is set, so it's got a little C there. Um, it also has fraction mode, and it, and it, it will display fractions in, in this way. Uh, hours, minutes, and seconds mode. Um, also time information. And at, uh, the first of my last two slides in summing up, um, again, it's a collaboration of two individuals.
they worked it in their free time as a hobby. Uh, they claim that their software is pretty much ready to roll, but they have not been able to actually uh, get a hold of the tools to get it to get it in its appropriate format to get it into the 30B itself. Um, and, and they're looking for feedback and any sort of volunteer assistance that could be provided to get this get this done. Um, I just wanted to show you a couple of emails that I had in communication with them. Um, I've got the full manual. Um, okay, it says here's the here's the manual covers the key features of the project as it is. Um, all depends on our ability to transfer the code into the real thing now. If there are or will be any uh, further questions or any comments about our project, don't hesitate to drop a message. Um, you may do as well if any volunteers show up willing to support us in the steps to come. Um, and you know, my best regard to the other members of the conference committee and all the all the lucky participants. Envy um, and uh, and Paul Dale, uh, you know, mentioned that Walter had supplied the reduced documentation as well as the full documentation. And he says, everything is pretty much complete except the actual port to the hardware. I know that the current code will fit having built it for the ARM platform. However, being laid off from work earlier this year has removed ready access to the tools needed to finish the port. Um, so if there are people out there that feel this is, this is a, um, an interesting project as I do and have the wherewithal to uh, help out in any way possible, I, you know, I would certainly appreciate if someone would Try to try to contact these guys and uh, volunteer any way you can. Uh, they're claiming they're pretty much ready to go. I, I would be amazed, you know, to, to shoehorn this into my into my 30B and then probably would enjoy spending about three weeks uh, trying to get my keyboard marked up properly <laughs> with the with the three shifts and uh, and whatnot. So, um, I, but you you could always buy a second one and then. Of course. No, that, that absolutely. No, <laughs> we're just saying, you know, I, I need to. Um, obviously, we need to put some, get some stickers and whatnot, and lay over the keyboard with the with the new, with the new markings and you know whatever it would be. It would be an interesting task. It might take longer to do that than for them to have actually written the code. But, you can always make a nice rubber cover over the top, like they did on the 41. Okay. 49. <laughs> yeah. So um, that's a scoop. Uh, I think this is a really, a really fantastic project. That they, they've gone crazy with it. And um, God, if this was, if this was ready, I think there'd be a lot of, you know, a lot of takers right now. So if there are people out there who think they can help, uh, please get in touch with these guys and um, and do what you can. I think everyone else is going to benefit. Okay, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to say, you know, surreal. His goal was always to make it so the 20B could be repurposed. He fought hard to get that. I mean, the fact that you can download a development kit for this thing, it took him months to get that pushed through. Yeah. And we're perfectly healthy, or we're willing and happy to help people that are interested in this. There's now going to be four models out there that you could repurpose if desired. We don't think that there's a huge market for you know, a repurposed device like this, but we know there's plenty of enthusiasts that would love it. Right, it's uh, obviously a do-it-yourself product. That's what we wanted. So we're perfectly willing to help and answer questions and things. Um, you know, we can't donate tools and money or sure. anything, but ask us, and it's more than likely okay. that we can help. What's what is actually program? needed to transfer the software? I, I don't, the cable. This I, mean, I, I don't know it. what. Or, yeah, I don't know the specifics. Maybe I need to find out. In C, and they have not done any work on the hardware itself. That's what I'm not sure of. I think that's correct. And so, you know, then it's just a case of somebody who's knowledgeable with that. You can use the template that's provided that will boot code on the 20B, and you should be able to get that in there. So. Um, I did not use the JTAG on the 10B2 for more than a day or two, honestly. I mean, once once it was booting and running, uh, my LCU was running, it was just flashing it with the regular serial cables that everyone has. So I'm sure there's somebody that can help them with that. Feel free to send me a note to get stuck. Sure. Thank you, Jake. That's it.